Welcome to the Simply Luxurious Kitchen. This season is all about comfort. With many French comfort recipes made in my own home kitchen, inspired by what I find in my garden, and kept company by my two furry companions, Join me as I share seasonal fare to elevate the everyday meal. And most importantly, discover how to enjoy stepping into your kitchen. Let's get started. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm Shannon Abels and this is a Simply Luxurious Kitchen. Today we're going to make a classic fall dessert that brings oodles of comfort to my household or my belly whenever I make it. Um, it is a classic French tart but it has a little bit more than what we've done in the past in previous episodes. We're going to have a layer of what is like applesauce and then we're going to cover it with apple slices so it looks absolutely appetizing and inviting and then you have the classic pastry crust and it just is oh, over the top delicious and super simple to make so let's get into this recipe now this particular tart was inspired by a cookbook that I have in my library baking with Julia and what I appreciate about this recipe is the filling um, I'm going to use my tart recipe that I use for everything that I love, but Baking with Julia, written by Dory Greenspan, is the filling and the decor or how we put it together, that's where that's going to come from. So I'll provide a link to that cookbook and everything on the show notes for today's episode. But we need to get started first with the crust. And the crust is super simple. We're going to do a blind bake with it, but we want to use a food processor. And we're going to do two cups. This is going to make a lot of dough. In fact, you could probably make one large tart and two or three small ones, or five or six small ones if you want. So about one cup of all-purpose flour. I like about two tablespoons of sugar, a pinch of salt, fleur de sol, fleur de sol. And then we're going to do a half a cup of unsalted butter. So let's get that in there. And you do preferably want the butter chilled, but it's going to be chilled for a bit in the refrigerator before you put it in the pan. So half of that, just chop it up. This actually came right out of the freezer. So it's super chilled, which is completely fine for what we're doing. You're going to pulse it until you have really, really fine crumbs, much like um, a little bit smaller than peas. And it's taking a little longer because they were frozen chunks of butter, but if it's from the refrigerator, it would go a lot, a lot quicker. Ah, awesome. Now, we're going to add three to four cups of cold water and just leave it running. You're going to want to watch this because based on where you live, the humidity is going to change the amount of water that you actually need. Here, it's very dry in bed, so I usually do use four tablespoons, but you're going to watch its consistency. You want to stop it right before it all clumps together because it will clump together 
on its own once you start rolling into a ball. Here we go. to make a different sound it starts to starts to clump up it hasn't all clumped up but it's almost there that's when I like to stop it plug it and now I'm gonna refrigerate it in some saran wrap just for about 30 minutes you can um, put it in the refrigerator while you're chopping the apples and then when the apples are done, you can then blind bake it. There we go, perfect. Now remember that with blind baking, it, you know, it, <laughs> it can look lovely, it can look not lovely, and it's still gonna taste great. What's gonna make it difficult to stand up is the more butter you use. So, you know, I like butter. So if it crimps down a little bit, even though I put the beans and the tin foil in, I'm okay with it as long as it tastes good. So I'm gonna put that in the refrigerator for 30 seconds and wait for that to kind of harden up and then I'll roll it out and we'll put it in our dishes. All right, let's get this out of the way. All right, not bad, <laughs> love it. Now we're going to chop and dice apples. So, this recipe, we're gonna fill a standard size tart pan. Now I've chosen a square one, you can choose a round one. Um, it's up to you what you have. Or you could choose four or five round ones, square ones. Have some fun, it really is up to you and who you're serving. Um, I like, <laughs> I'll be honest, I like the small ones because then I get more crests with each tart, but that's just me. So anyway, I have some company coming tonight, so I want to have a beautiful tart to welcome them into the home. So we're going to use this square dish, and what we're going to do, I have a couple different apples here, and then again, recipes often call for a particular apple primarily because of their ability to maintain their shape um, or mush down easily, more easily if you want that or don't want that. Granny Smiths are often the ones that are said to be used for apple um, pies and tarts. But I've used all sorts of apples. It really is up to you. What I've chosen to, to do today is put Granny Smith's in the filling, and then I'm going to use my um, Honeycrisp, I believe these are, um, these Honeycrisp. I'm gonna use a Honeycrisp for the topping. And it just delineates in my brain the colors. These are for the topping, and these are for the filling. Um, but have fun with it. Basically, you're gonna need five to six apples for the filling, what I like to call the applesauce, and you're gonna need three to four apples for the top. So we're gonna worry about those lovely, lovely, lovely ladies later. Let's dice these up. All right, so for the filling, I have turned the oven on to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and I've lined a baking pan sheet with tin foil, and I highly recommend tin foil over parchment paper um, just simply because these apples are gonna get juicy and messy and sticky, and this is for easy cleanup. Um, but again, it's up to you what you wanna do, but I, um, I like my tin foil. So now we're just going to chop each of these apples up into about 12 pieces, big chunks. Nothing fancy, because we're gonna mush them into applesauce. So here we go. longest part of this dish besides waiting for it to bake is the peeling and the coring and the slicing of the apples so put some good music on maybe you're watching a favorite show on a favorite movie and just kind of find the loveliness or the peace in doing something quite simple but that needs your full attention so here we go <laughs> Apples, chopped up, 
chopped up roughly. We put them in a sheet pan, but we need to add the flavor. So what we want to do is add about a half a cup to three fourths a cup of sugar. Sprinkle it all over. You're going to mix this up with your hands here in a second. Just do that. Okay. And we're going to add about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of flour. This is just thicken up the sauce. Again, all. Now for the cinnamon, add a pinch of cinnamon. It is an apple tart after all. Maybe two pinches. <laughs> and believe it or not, the recipe calls for breadcrumbs. So when I first made this, I was like, what? But think about it as what you use for meatballs. The breadcrumbs soak up the excess moisture and they give the, the meatball substance. Well, we want substance in the filling of this pie, or this tart, I should say. So we're gonna add about a fourth of a cup to half a cup of, I use panko breadcrumbs, but you can use any kind of breadcrumbs that you have from the bread you bought yesterday. Um, and just use a food processor and dice them up. So about a half a cup. Okay, and we're just gonna mix it up with our hands. And that's why I like having foil on here because foil stays in place. Um, and it also only dirties one pan. That's kind of like what I like to think about when I simplify my recipes, but I wanna keep what the recipe is all about. So mix it all up. It's eventually all gonna be mashed up together anyway. All right. So we're gonna add a little bit of lemon this will add a bit of flavor, but we can also use it later when we're slicing up the other apples to keep them from browning. All right, so this is gonna go in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes at 375 degrees. Now, while that is baking, we're going to roll out the dough for our blind baked crust for our tart. So let's get that out of the refrigerator. Okay, so this has been chilling for about 30 minutes, which is perfect. Now, this is what I like to do. Marble surfaces are the best. This is not marble, this is quartz. Um, but I love a smooth surface. So get your um, dough board out here, get whatever it is you wanna roll down, uh, roll on down. And I use a little bit of flour and I use a little bit of sugar. It is a sweet pastry crust. And this will be just more incorporation of that sweetness. Not a lot, just enough. All right. And part of the reason that I chose to use a square pan is sometimes it's easier to roll a square than it is a circle. So I'm just helping myself out whenever I can. <laughs> so I'm gonna flatten that down into a disc, drop some sugar on top, then some flour, and roll it out. very, very narrow spatula that I like to pull out for just those instances when it gets too happy hanging on to the board. So roll that up, and it's gonna happen. And that's okay. But see, I love this, how wiggly that is. I got it for pancakes and eggs and all that fun stuff, but uh, works perfect for dough making. Okay, so very gently is everything Everything is up. If we're good. You can always mend it. But since we're blind baking, there we go. Not bad. Not bad. Snuggle it over. There we go. Again, you can always patch. So don't think it has to be perfect. In fact, patching makes it more perfect for what you need. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. We're eventually gonna cut off the edges here. Just patch where you need to. I love doing that. Ooh, look at that big piece of dough. Let's taste that. That's good. All right, okay. A little more patching here, Oscar. You're doing great, buddy. Now, Take this, this is why I love a French rolling pin. Just roll it over the top. 
roll it over the top. And because you have those edges, they act like little slicers themselves. And look at that. Perfect. Ta-da. <laughs> now, I'm going to blind bake this. So my cooking pearls, as they say. Now you do want parchment. Huh, on bake. He's waiting for dough. Do you want a piece of dough? There you go. Yes. Okay. And you're gonna lay that on top. Now, if you have beans, coffee beans, any kind of beans, it really does not matter. Pour those in. In fact, I might have to do that. I even use rice, which I'm gonna use this time. Pour in and hold it up. And just make sure it's all snug in the corners and the edges. All right, now this goes into the oven at 400 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes. Now, if you have a really hot oven or a really compact oven that bakes quickly, check it at 20. So let's put this in. So I'm gonna check that at 20. I think what I like most about apples is they seem to be just ubiquitous in the sense that they're always there. You can always count on the grocery store, the farmer's market, the market down at the corner <laughs> to have them. Um, there's a comfort in that. And there's so many different varietals out there you can try and taste and it's almost like wine tasting or cheese tasting. Um, having fun with that is, is, is a joy as well. I feel like a kid in a candy store and then you're eating fruit and you're like, ah, this is, this is healthy. Uh, <laughs> but what I really like about apple tarts, and I, I used to eat apple pies a lot when I was younger in our family, but I, I have gravitated toward French apple tarts since because of their delicacy, but also the presentation and the artistry of the pastry. And it doesn't have to be perfect, as we'll talk about in today's episode, but it's this idea of paying attention to the crust itself, but also the combination of the crust and the apples without too much of the crust. And so you have the underneath part, but you don't have to have a top part. Um, it's just, again, a preference that I have, but um, yeah, fall is apples and apples go in tarts and pies. And uh, there's nothing more delicious than smelling a baked apple dessert coming out of the oven. And uh, this one, this one's definitely a comfort. All right, now we're gonna get the other apples ready. These are the ones that are gonna go on the top. So we wanna have a bowl to put them in and we're gonna put a little bit of lemon in there when they get in there. And we're gonna slice them fairly finely and lengthwise so that we can lay them decoratively all around the top. So, whoops, I need one more dish for my <laughs> skins and the core. Get those out. There are many ways to make an apple tart. One of the simplest ways um, to make an apple tart is something I did in a previous season of the show. And it literally is grab an apple, just one, it's perfect for one or two people. And you just roll out the dough flat. You don't even have to put it in a crust or a pan or anything. Put the slices of apple on top, sprinkle it with brown sugar, and in the oven it goes. Um, that recipe is actually inspired by Poulain in Paris. That's how they make theirs for the most part. Uh, a little more fancy. And it's something I can get done and made in a 30 minutes and have a dessert when I need something sweet, but that doesn't require a lot of work. This recipe, this, this French tart, um, apple tart recipe, is just has a little more extra presentation. And that's what these apples here will do. They will be baked, they'll be browned a little bit, um, but they'll just make someone go, whoo! <laughs> And uh, we'll get through getting these ready and then we'll start putting the tart together. So now what I like to do for this 
is to get a good parry knife and then you flip it on the core side down and flip it on one of the edges so it sits pretty secure. And you're just gonna slice it fairly narrowly. And I like to hold them all together. Number one, I can see what the size is and try to match it. This isn't perfect, but it works a little bit. And then it also secures everything so it makes it easier to slice swiftly and safely. Save the ends and stick these in here. Add some lemon juice. Again, you're trying to, because they're not ready to be put on the tart yet, so you're trying to make sure they don't turn brown. So just keep doing that through all of them. See how they look. Yeah, yeah. Woo! They're definitely cooking. Oh! <laughs> What I'd like to do before I finish this is I'm going to take these and put them in the bowl. And actually, you could probably just pick up the, the tin foil and just scoop it up into this because that's where it's at. If you don't have a masher, it's completely fine because you're really just giving it a rough mash, I guess you could call it. It's okay to still have chunks in it. In fact, it's preferred because it lets people know what that feeling is. I really do uh, liken this to an applesauce. And the chunkier, the better for me, but if you like yours really fine, you could obviously do these really fine. It's up to you. You just want it all blended together. And that looks good for me. It's gonna be so soft and yummy to bite into. Oh, okay. We're gonna put this aside, finish this. The, the, the blind baking is almost done and we'll put it all together and get started. The one thing about baking, and cooking in your own kitchen is it is your kitchen and letting go of perfect as far as the appearance goes I think it's gonna take off or does take off a lot of stress and lets you enjoy what you're doing food is food it's not perfect it's not gonna be the perfect finish on the outside for the apple in that picture it's not gonna be the perfect crust bake I can guarantee you that blind bake is not gonna be perfect but it's gonna taste good and that's what you're going for. And it will still look appetizing. Um, the key is to have fun, to enjoy stepping into your kitchen, to enjoy thinking about stepping into your kitchen. I know that these last six or seven months, stepping into my kitchen has been therapeutic more so than ever before. It really lets me slip away into my own little world. And whether I'm eating on my own or no people are coming over for a dinner or, or a book club or whatever, I have fun stepping in. And the more I do it, even if I cook the same thing constantly, I'm getting really good at it and I can fine tune it and finesse it and keep it as simple as it needs to be for you. Um, the recipe might call for something to add a finishing flourish, and if you don't want to do that, don't do it. If you do sometimes want to give it a shot, give it a shot. All right, I'm just going to mix up the lemon a little bit. Don't get too aggressive with it because you want to keep the sizes. Woo! This is like little accordions. I love it. And those are ready to go on top of the filling when we put the whole tuck together. Stick that right here. Woo! Yeah. The oven's really warm. I love that oven for, for my dogs because I've found Norman will lay in front of it after I'm done cooking. Um, <laughs> it's like a stove, so it's kind of an added bonus. Okay, all right, so now these are gonna be hot, especially those pearls, the metal pearls, so be careful. But just take it out, looks pretty good. Oh yeah, this looks good. All right, so, so I'm actually gonna let this cool for a little bit, and then when it does, after about 15 minutes, we will put the filling in. We'll put the apples arranged on top and stick in the oven. And um, what we're hearing now is the oven is staying at 375. So if you're using one oven, reduce the 400 if, for the filling that you had, reduce that 400 to 375. 
So for 375 here in a second, once we get it all set up for 20 to 25 minutes, we can have it. All right, let's put this together. So what we want to do, put the applesauce, as I like to call it, right on in. I love how thick and how, much, how it's not wet and juicy. It just is an actual filling. It's a filling of everything that this tart is. Apples, filled with apples. So spread it out to corners, or all the way to the edges if you're doing a round one. Yep. Perfect. Now, the artistry. <laughs> uh, again, start on the outside edges. The apples will shrink as they bake, so they can overlap just a little bit. And so you just want to, from the outside, just go all the way around. You can layer as tightly or as loosely as you want, depending on how many apples you have. But if you do a square one, these actually work pretty well because the edge of the apple, depending on how you cut them, can look like it fits right into that elbow perfectly. And this is the part about baking that I like in the sense that it's not rushed. It's very simple, but you can put your own artistic touch to it. And if you don't do it just perfectly according to the recipe, it's still gonna taste just all gonna taste like apples with cinnamon and sugar yeah and anything that this doesn't fit just the way you want it to just leave it here we might do something with it later that one's a little too thick but this one works perfectly so now find a thick piece and he's down yes it's up to you how you want to do the centerpiece. You could do a real thick piece that's about a half an inch or two and, and, and just make it a square or a circle and plop it right in the middle. Or you could do a really long piece and curve it and put it right in the middle too. Or here, you could just fan it up. It's really, it's kind of, let's see, smaller ones. So that's, you know, you can just have some butter with it. So I'm melting some butter here because we're going to brush all the apples with that. And then we're going to sprinkle a little bit of Demerara sugar on top just to add that extra finishing touch. This is basically done. You can use a microwave to do this as well. Get a brush. Ooh, yeah, it's hot. <laughs> and just delicately or gently brush it. This should be pretty secure. Let me just go with the grain. Use unsalted butter. The butter they use for the crust of the pastry. Just get it everywhere. My oven is ready for this tart to go in the oven. Now the Demerara sugar is just a little bit more granular. And what I love about it is it's wonderful for finishing um, or putting the topping of of your pastries. I've put it on top of cakes before and it does add a little bit of extra crunch. At the top you can put as much or as little as you want but it's lovely finishing sugar and it does have this amber color to it which makes it unique as well. All right perfect. All right so we're going to put this in a 375 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes. Now this crust is already brown, so you're probably going to want to check that about five to ten minutes in, and you might want to cover it with tin foil so that the crust stops browning, doesn't get black, and the rest of the baking for the apples happens. So we'll check it about five, ten minutes, maybe add some tin foil. But other than that, it's good to go. Ooh, tart is almost done. I had a peek, and it's looking good. And I'm going to turn the hot water on for some tea because we're going to have tea and tart and maybe some gelato if we want it. And Oscar's here, so we got to take it out almost, right? We have about two minutes until the tart's done, and then we'll get started. Let's check it out. Yes. Oh. So that's still going to be hot. So 
as you can see, the poof in the middle didn't stay up, but what it did do is it flowered out and it just kind of fits in that space. It's just perfect, perfectly imperfect, I guess you could say. Tea's getting there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out of the tart pan. You can let it cool for a little bit, maybe 30 minutes, 15, 30 minutes. Um, when you do, then you have a place to put it. It should come out just fine. So we'll give it a second, and then as soon as that tea's done, we'll get, we'll get right into it. We'll be putting it on a small pot, just like that. Perfect. And then you have your plate right there for it. And the bottom is still hot, because remember the bottom is still attached here. And there you go. Beautiful. And we have an apple, a French apple tart. Now, let's make some tea. All right, so let's give this a shot. I love a good warm apple tart. That crunch of that crust. Yum. Oh, and the crust is nice and brown. It's everything you want from a blind baked crust. You could, or my, you could have, uh, what I like to put it on it is Dolce de Leche ice cream from Bonsa here in Bend. It's um, gelato and I love that, but it really is just fine by itself. All right, let's have a bite. Get a little crust, get a little apple and oh, look at that filling oh my gosh if you can see that see how you just have what reminds me of an apple pie so basically this is kind of a combo of an apple pie and an apple tart there you go mm. Mm. <laughs> crust is buttery and flaky that filling you get the apple context when you, chop, when you bite into that top layer, but then you bite into that applesauce and it just melts. It's because it's, it's already melted. And then it just, oh, so you have a lot of different texture here. Multiple apples based on what you've chosen and dash of that cinnamon. And you don't even know that there's breadcrumbs in here. You have no clue that there's breadcrumbs. That's our secret. <laughs> Let's get some tea. Make this a proper dessert. Okay. So enjoy your day, enjoy your food, and enjoy stepping into your kitchen. Bon journée. Thanks for joining me. An everyday luxury um, for me is reading, and I share a lot of them on the blog and the podcast, but I thought I'd share with you a comfort read for food lovers that's not your typical recipe style. Nigel Slater is a British food writer, um, cookbook writer, columnist, he's had his own shows. His book Toast has turned into a movie um, that I highly recommend. And this particular book um, follows his kitchen diary. So this is Nigel Slater Notes from the Larder, and it follows the same style as his kitchen diaries, which came out a handful of years before that. But what I love about this is that he takes you through the season. So it's basically a diary. So June 25th, he calls it sorting the wheat. He walks you through what he did that day, and then he'll share with you a recipe. Um, the recipe is talked through as, as how he approaches it, but it's integrated into the day and, and why he chose that recipe for that particular day of the season. So if you're looking for a book that not only is a good evening reading as you're relaxing, um, but you're also looking for delicious, simple recipes that are seasonal, I highly recommend Notes from the Larder and his Kitchen Diaries. I pulled a handful of recipes out of here um, and shared one of them that readers love, his zucchini and pancetta and orzo pasta. Um, but uh, hot, yeah, if you're looking for a good read, these are wonderful. His kitchen, his Christmas diaries, um, but Nigel Slater. Look him up, I have a feeling you'll enjoy it.